I think I might have come up with the best parts drawers ever. It's better than this, better than these, and you probably already own one. It's CD shelves? Let me explain. Good workshop storage is one thing. Dynamic. These parts drawers are not that. They just don't store a lot of my parts well at all. Look at these inserts, for example. To keep these organised, I would need to use three of these bins. It's just not that efficient for how much I have. Here's how much I use in total, and here's how much I use frequently. Like, I don't even... I didn't... I legitimately didn't know these were in here. That's how little I, I know what's in these drawers. That's a lot of valuable bench space taken up by not a whole lot. The solution to this hit me, almost literally, when I tripped at a flea market and almost fell into a stall selling this CD rack. It has amazing potential. It allows for wide, flat drawers for small numbers of parts to be organised. And unlike other bins, it has no horizontal dividers. This means parts bins, or other inserts, can be as big or as small as I need them to be. I got to work making a quick prototype, which of course worked. It would have been embarrassing to fail at drawing a rectangle. But this prototype immediately exposed some big issues. Firstly, 30 grams isn't that much, but times that by 60 and you have almost 2 kilos of filament, which is not at all insubstantial. And secondly, 60 perfect first layers is a lot, and with a 10 minute startup sequence, that's 10 hours of just waiting for the printer to start. Fortunately, we can mitigate both of these with some clever printing tricks. Firstly, we can save a lot of time and plastic by just removing the base of the drawers. Unfortunately, this means that the drawer now can't be used, but don't worry, there is a solution to that. By adding a pause at a specific layer, we can insert a piece of 1000 GSM cardboard, that's grams per square meter, into the print. Resuming the print, the printer will print on and trap the card in place. This brings the weight to just 8 grams of filament, saving roughly 60% on material costs and print time. But single large drawers are not much use, so let's try with some dividers. This works, but is unreliable. Slight variations in the height of the paper make it difficult to do reliably. So back to Fusion, I add some tabs to allow for different dividers to be printed separately, which is just a far better solution overall. Different dividers can of course be used for different types of parts to store them efficiently. This cardboard bottom also solves the build plate issue, since the design can now be stacked support free. By ironing the top layer and placing objects a fraction of a millimetre above each other, many of the same object can be printed in a single print cycle. The prints can then be separated and used as normal. I also wanted to be able to use the space for more than just parts, so I've made a small range of things that show what it's capable of. This is just a fraction of what the system is capable of, but it's held back by one big thing. The size of a CD. Specifically, a CD case doesn't neatly mesh with Gridfinity, which I would consider to be the true king of printed storage. It's so close to being perfect. I think this setup is great, but I don't think I'll work with the size of a CD case in the future, but if you do have some CD racks you want to use, I will of course be releasing what I've made so far. I'm keen to hear what people have to say about this one. Parts in the description are all open source. The rest of the video is just a satisfying sorting montage if you're into that type of thing. Thanks, as always, for watching.